So let's now look at a few more examples of curve sketching. So let's sketch the graph of the curve r equals 2 sine theta. Now what we typically do to get going with sketching these curves is to first start with a, in a place of familiarity, that is in the Cartesian coordinate system. So I'm going to start by sketching it in the Cartesian coordinate system. The only reason I want to sketch it there is because I want to get a feel for how does r change when theta changes. Um, if you want to think of it in comparison to just the last example, here I was just noticing that as I let my theta value increase, my r value increased. So I was using the fact that, that there was this relationship between r and theta. And I didn't really have to sketch the graph of this because I could immediately see as theta increases, r increases. But that's the kind of thing I want to have in mind when I'm sketching something like this. I want to know as theta increases, how does r increase? Maybe I'm going to get a visual of this first. I'm going to get a visual for how theta and r are related. So that means I'm going to sketch it in Cartesian coordinates, in the Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so we're going to have to be able to sketch these trig functions in Cartesian coordinates. The way I would do this is I say, well, it's the sine function whose amplitude is now 2. So it's the sine function. And its amplitude is now 2, so we're going up two units, we're down to negative two. What are the main features here? Well, it peaks out at pi by two, it crosses at pi, it bottoms out at three pi by two, crosses again at two pi, and then it just repeats itself. And it keeps going all the way along. Uh, so maybe I'll do a few more. So this is five pi by two, three pi, seven pi by two, and uh, four pi. Now that gives me information about how theta and r are related. As theta increases from 0 to pi by 2, I see my r value increasing. So now I'm set to plot this in the polar coordinate system. So let's look at the polar coordinate system. When theta is 0, r is 0. So I'm right here. When theta is 0, r is 0. Now as theta increases, my r value increases, so that when theta hits pi by 2, my r value is 2. So I'm going to end up here, having an r value of 2. But in order to get from there to there, I have to sweep out different angles. So as my angles increase to pi by 2, my r value increases. So it looks something like this. My r value, I'm getting farther and farther away from the pole, so that, for example, when I'm out here at theta equals pi by 4, my r value in that case, what is r when theta is pi by 4? That's sine of pi by 4. Or in other words, 2 times 1 over root 2, or root 2. So there's my r value. It's root 2. Root 2 is my r value. What if I'm at pi by 6? What's r of 2 sine? pi by 6. Well, sine of pi by 6 is root 3 over 2, so this would be 2 times root 3 over 2, or root 3. So I'm even further away. Root 3 is bigger than root 2, so I'm even further away. So I'm up here somewhere. There's my theta is pi by 6, and now my distance is root 3. It's not necessary to th throw this extra information there, but I'm just trying to give you an indication of what I'm using, what I'm actually thinking of. As my theta value increases, so does my r value. My r value increases all the way up to 2. So I'm going to indicate this by putting a little 1 here. That little segment that we just looked at corresponded to this piece that I've now sketched. Now let's move on to the next piece, part 2. As theta goes from pi by 2 down to pi, or pi by 2 to pi, the r value drops now to 0. So my r value is now dropping down to 0, so that when I finally hit pi, a theta value of pi, I'm right at the pole again, because my r value is 0. I'm a distance 0 from the pole. And so that's, that's segment 2. So far, so good. Now what about segment 3? Segment 3, as my theta value goes from pi to pi, 3 pi by 2, as I trace out angles in this quadrant 3, my r value goes from 0 to negative 1. 
Ah, so here's where things get interesting. My R value is negative. If my R value were positive, then it would probably look something like this. You know, it would just trace out what looks what it looks like above. But my R value is not positive. My R value is negative. So I had to slingshot to the other side of the pole. So this is not what I have here. Those would be for R values being positive. Instead, I slingshot to the other side of the pole. So I start to trace out what looks like the same portion of the curve again. So this is uh, part three. Part three gives me that portion here. Okay, so it might, at this point, it might be worthwhile to sort of see this dynamically. Okay, so here we've got the curve sketched in the Cartesian coordinate system on the left. Watch what happens as that point, as the theta value increases. So we have this point, this green point on the Cartesian curve. Its R value is increasing. If you look on the right, you'll see how we're sketching it in the polar coordinate uh, coordinate system. The R value is increasing, so this green point is going to start to pull away from the pole. So as we go up, R values are increasing. We get to a maximum R value of 2. And then from the Cartesian gr uh, graph on the left, we see that the R value starts to decrease until we hit a theta value of pi where the R value is 0. And so that looks like a perfect circle. And now what happens? Now the R value becomes negative. And I've indicated this here with a dotted line. So this is the positive R values for that corresponding angle theta. The dotted line indicates the negative R values. I've just called it negative right here. So let's indicate that those are the negative values. And again, we trace out the circle again, this time with our negative R values until we hit 2 pi and we're back to where we started. And then it could just keep going and going and going. Here I only let my slider grow up to 2 pi, but we could increase it and just see that it keeps tracing it out over and over again. So we saw that because of the fact that we get some negative R values, uh, this causes the circle to be traced out twice. In other words, we don't get this circle down below, um, which we may have expected to get as we trace through angles from pi to 3 pi by 2, for example. Uh, so what if we just play around with this a little bit and say, okay, um, I had some negative R values here. Let's make them positive. How are we going to make them positive? We can just take the absolute value of this function instead. And notice what happened. For all of these values, so r as theta goes from 0 to pi, the r values are all positive. We land back at pi, so that means we've traced around the circle once. Well, let's actually just see it. We trace around the circle once, and now we get to pi. And now we're going through angles from pi to 3 pi by 2, and we're still on the positive part of that ray. Positive r values for those corresponding angles. And so we trace out the bottom circle. So that's pretty neat. In some sense, without the absolute values, the bottom circle ended up getting folded on top of the top circle. What kind of shape does this look like? And to me, it kind of looks like a circle. So here's my question. Is this a circle? Is this a circle? Can we actually show that this is a circle? Now let's check. Let's check to see if it's a circle. How do we check that? Well, r is 2 sine theta. But what's sine theta? Sine theta is y by r. Oh, so r squared is 2 times y. Oh, but 2 times y, which is r squared, is equal to x squared plus y squared. Ah, there we go. That's a circle. So switching from polar coordinate description into the Cartesian coordinate description, we see that it's act actually a circle. Um, what circle is it? It's x squared plus y squared minus 2y. Um, we can complete the square. So x squared plus y minus 1 
all squared. If I square this, that's y squared minus 2y plus 1. And so to get rid of that 1, because I introduced a 1 here, if I square this out, I get what I had above plus an extra 1. So I have to take away that 1. So I could take away a 1 and then get it equal to 0. Or I can just move the 1 to the other side. And there's our circle. It's a circle of radius 1 shifted up one unit. So there's a center of one, and yeah, it's a radius one because if that's the center, then we see that the places where it hits above are set two, so one unit above the center, one unit below the center. So it is a circle.